I'm going to just bend it a little in my own direction. And this idea of game theory or what game matters kind of thing is sort of useful metaphor, I think, to understand that most of what we do, most of the economy of our lives, one could argue, I think fairly, is that it's some sort of zero sum in its, in its, just in its foundation, like worrying about who wins the World Series. It just really doesn't matter. There's, there's very little, there might be some likelihood that there's a maximum best result, like the most people are made happy and the fewest people are made sad by who ends up winning. Certainly you could construct it with some drama, you know, like some heroic figure does some heroic thing and it makes it more exciting and so that more people are pleased by the experience. But basically it's bullshit, who cares? This isn't important, it's only important because people have become attached to it for some nonsensical, stupid kind of ignorant reason that they think this crap is important, nothing else. They certainly could think some other kind of crap is important. Some might argue that it's all crap, but I would argue that it's not all crap. Being in a contest to cure cancer or something, or to in some other way liberate people from some encumbrance that does matter, some better painkiller would certainly be a help. A better antibiotic would be a help. Certain things that are just on balance going to create more comfort and discomfort in the world tomorrow. The crying game is the game. The game of sentience is the game. Suffering is the game. Burden is the game. And the game is, is to get rid of that crap. The easiest way to get rid of it is just don't turn it on. And that's really the game that matters. So that's what I want to get to is that Hero said it's a bunch of an infinite number of little games. No, and he said there is no one game, one big game. Well, no, there is one big game. You get it exactly backwards. And all the little games we play are the ones that don't matter, the ones that are irrelevant, that most of the time are zero sum. And I would argue they're negative sum in the sense that, um, you know, for the existence of football, there's a huge amount of casualties because people need this entertainment and haven't chosen a better entertainment. I mean, you just think if you could migrate people to some other contest to watch, you wouldn't have to cripple all those kids. You wouldn't have all these disaffected lives, all these inflated egos, all the, the damage that's done to us socially by having anything close to these idiotic gladiator wars, idiotic contests for people to watch, contests that produce absolutely nothing, a goal, somebody kicks a ball into a frickin' net. That's their goal, that's the score. <laughs> yeah, there's no value in that. The human being can't eat that, a human being can't sleep on that. There's people in Indonesian prisons right now, can't do a damn thing with that. It would have been better if their goal scored was to get them out of that shithole or to give them some comfort. Instead of watching a stupid ball go across some perimeter. These games we play are insidiously stupid. There is one game. There's one game that we are playing, and it's the game of the sentient welfare. There are categories. There's two categories that sentience can be in, comfortable and uncomfortable. Suffering or some bliss, if you want to use the extreme words. They're not opposites of each other, <laughs> okay? One is the absence of the other. Discomfort is created by applying a burden, and comfort is created by releasing the burden. And let's not lie, that's what makes you happy. Like winning the lottery, your liberty, your freedom from your poverty. The truth nobody wants to hear is the easiest way to get rid of it is just to turn the key.